All right, so um, my name is Ragda Abdel Maksud, and I am an advanced clinical aromatherapist. Um, originally uh, Egyptian, and now I'm living in the United States. Um, I am also uh, the founder and director of Eber School of Aromatherapy. Um, the international relationship director for the um, NAHA organization, which is the National Association for Holistic Aromatherapy. And uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit later about NAHA, but let's uh, start our uh, topic today uh, about plant medicine. Uh, so I, I would just like, uh, as I, every time I'm starting a presentation, I would like you guys to take a deep breath, uh, inhale and exhale. Uh, we have a lot of people from different countries and a lot of uh, great topics and uh, um, a lot of um, original plants in every country. Just open heart, breathe, and let's start. Objective today is to talk about um, aromatherapy as part of plant, therapy, of plant medicine. Um, what is aromatherapy? How does it work? The pharmacology, the chemistry, and the controversy behind the, this science and art. Um, as I said, I'm Egyptian and I always would like to show a little bit of my country before I start. Um, within my um, education, we take people to different parts of the world to see in study tours, to see countries and see how things are done uh, properly and to educate them um, proper education. So let me just make this quick video and then we'll go ahead and start our presentation. talking about plants and as Albert Einstein said look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better and for me before studying aromatherapy or even studying um, medicinal plant I was working okay I was working in um, the medicinal herbs an aromatic plant industry for 25 years. Um, meeting growers, meeting uh, people, uh, food chemists, laboratory people, and um, the farmers who are actually behind this great uh, energy coming from the plant. Plants are very, very intelligent. They have been there for millions of years before us. They know how to adapt to changes. They harvest the sun, the water, and give us this amazing intelligence. We cultivate them and transfer them into food, into medicine, 
and into essential oils. And um, the molecules of this essential oils that we are actually extracting from the plant material is an amazing modality and an amazing um, alternative medicine modalities that we are using. Um, it, it changed my life completely when I started studying this and I hope it will be something that will change um, people's life. Um, before starting and talking about aromatherapy and um, how it works, um, aromatherapy is not uh, a cure or it's not to replace medicine. It is more for enhancing immunity, a better quality of life, to have less visits to the doctors and to have less medicine. But we cannot say that leave your medicine and start, for example, taking oregano or taking any other oil. This is completely not what we are trying to uh, tell people or educate them or to build awareness uh, about this. Um, to go back to history, uh, plant medicine has been a journey full of tradition and, and then folk medicine and a lot of magic and science behind it. I'll start with Egypt. And uh, before that, all the ancient civilizations were actually occurring on the biggest four rivers, the Nile, the Farad, the Indus, and the Yellow um, River in China. And um, before starting with Egypt, in, in 1700 BC, BC uh, there was the first establishment of the traditional Chinese medicine, which has 365 drugs of dried plants, uh, dried parts of medicinal plants, which are used until today. Some of them are camphor and ginseng and cinnamon bark. Um, then going back to India, where the Ayurvedic Vedas and all these 3,000 old, uh, years old uh, scripts, uh, the knowledge of life, where the Ayurvedic um, medicine is talking about mind, body, and soul, like all the alternative medicines. It doesn't look to the person as only a physical body. And um, from India to Egypt, where everything was written on the walls, um, plant medicine and plants and, and aromatics and oils were used on daily basis. And uh, we have Ebers Papyrus, where I took my company name from, which has a collection of 800 prescrip prescriptions referring to seven hundred different species of plants and it was very very detailed if you can see it includes medicinal treatments surgical interference anatomy physiology skin eyes and ears it was actually um, a hospital in a medicine book um, it has very very detailed prescriptions with methods of applications and then follow up. Uh, so it was used there. At that time, there was no nothing called aromatherapy, but people were using medicinal herbs, were using animal fats, were using uh, uh, oils, uh, like olive oil and almond oil in their preparations, or even um, um, beer and, and other uh, products. Then after that, um, we have Deus, um, Deus Crotus who wrote the great Materia Medica and he used the medicinal plants in his Materia Medica and that was one of the great achievements that people are, were, were using it for many years. It was a Bible of the medicine until the 16th century. Uh, after that, Galenus, who are the greatest doctor in the Roman period, he developed many pharmaceutical preparations and um, compiled the first list of 
drugs uh, in history. Then the, the first pharmacy actually was in Baghdad in the Islamic uh, era and carried these spices coming from India and medicines from Persia and China, like camphor, clove, and musk. Then came uh, Ibn Sina or Avicenna, who was the Galenus of the Arab, who was an opposing for alchemy and he was a seeker of science and chemistry. And he writes a very important book, which is called The Canon of Medicine. And he was the first one to invent the steam distillation process, which at that point, it was a huge shift in using the aromatic plants after using the steam distillation. Um, after Avicenna, um, there was a lot of other great um, scientists and uh, through the 15th and 16th century, aromatic plants was still used widely in um, a lot of incidents like the Spanish plague where the um, doctors were wearing the peaks full of all the uh, herbs and like rosemary, sage, clove, and camphor in order to go through the bodies in, in Europe. Then with the modern um, herbalists, and one of them is the great Rosemary Gladstar in, um, in the United States. She also um, used the fire cider, which is everybody was using through last year when we have the COVID and we're still using it. It's, it's a mix of apple cider vinegar and a lot of herbs that is anti-inflammatory and antibacterial. Um, the modern uh, discovery of aromatherapy actually happened in France in 1937. It was by Dr. René Gadafoss. He was working in his laboratory and accidentally he suffered from a burn of some chemicals that he was using. And he applied lavender oil and after two days, all of the pains and the burns were actually um, gun. And he was very extensively researching what happened. So what happened was the chemical constituent component in the lavender, which is the linalyl acetate, which has this effect on, on him. Going forward, he used the term aromatherapy for the first time and he started uh, his journey He started his journey and um, with um, a lot of books and a lot of research and development in the um, use of essential oils in, um, in, dermatolo in dermatology. Another pioneer was Dr. Valnet and he was a French scientist and the army physician, which was using tea tree oil successfully for uh, treating the wounded uh, soldiers during world, the Second World War uh, when he ran out of antibiotics. And he actually wrote the first Materia Aromatica and uh, for the recent times of how to use therapeutic applications of essential oils. Then Dr. Then Margaret Murray, who was uh, a surgical assistant nurse, interest in, in biochemistry and she explored the therapeutic use of essential oils in 1940 in her book The Secrets of Life and Use and she used it as something called cosmetic therapy based on massage of using essential oils. And in order to understand how essential oils work we have to understand the the pharmacology behind it. And I am, I'm, um, I'm not a doctor, uh, I'm a clinical certified, so I'm, 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 tr I'm trying to um, explain this on my very, very uh, own simple way. Um, so pharmacology can help us understand how plant medicine works in our body. But plant medicine has energetics that drugs don't have. And one of those uh, energetics is 
the to being tonic and adaptogen. And a tonic is uh, a potent select, it's, it's herbs known to deeply restore and tone multiple body systems and um, holistically promote the health and mind, body, and soul. Some of those tonics are uh, licorice, rose hips, and astrag astragalus. The other thing which is energetic and it's not found in drugs is adaptogens, which increase the body's ability to resist all the aggressors, so whether it's physical, chemical, or biological, in non-specific matters, like holy basil and ashwagandha. So we all have receptor binders in our body and this is the way we the communication between any external drug or any external ingredient mo molecules to deliver message to our cells and actually this is how essential oils works in our body but with a very very um, small uh, research that was done um, they used the uh, thyme oil and the carvacrol in the thyme oil and to see how it can affect the, to lower blood pressure in some uh, patients. And uh, the thymol and the carvacrol binds to the receptors in the cardiac muscle, and they tell the cells to decrease the amount of calcium to allow the cardiac muscle to relax and the blood pressure to drop. This doesn't mean that we have to use thyme oil and stop our blood pressure uh, medications, but that's how essential oils works in, in our body. So let's see how, what are essential oils? Essential oils are plant material that are collected and harvested, and it comes from different parts of the plants, depending on which aromatic plant we are using. And um, it's collected in uh, steam chambers, distillations, under certain heat and certain time for um, the steam distillation, and then it goes into the condensers, and then uh, we have essential oils coming, and we also have floral waters or hydrosol. This is how essential oils are done. So it's very, very concentrated uh, products um, and very, very dangerous if we if we don't know how to use them, but at the same time very beneficial if we know how to use them. So essential oils are actually uh, the prana, the life, the tea of the plant. It is not a smell good, feel good thing. It's more a, ke a chemistry, it's a science and an art. Um, so essential oils in the plants uh, are very important because it is the defense mechanism of the plant and it's the immune system of the plant as well. Uh, so, um, they are contain, they contain uh, hydrocarbons in the form of terpenes and complex oxygenated carbons like alcohols and esters and aldehydes and oxides. And when we use aromatherapy, it's, it's, it's chemistry, it's like a symphony that everything is, is the, all the molecules are working together to have a great piece of, of music. To work with. So how essential oils actually work in the body? So um, when we smell the molecules of coming from the essential oil, it goes to our olfactory bulb through the nasal mucosa and then these molecules goes to the olfactory cells and then to the blood brain barrier, then to our stream, impacting the thalamus and the hypothalamus where we have all in the limbic region where we have all the memories and the emotions which in return impact also the endocrine system which makes our nervous system calm and therefore a response can happen in less than three seconds or we can use it through the topical application and through it goes through our hair follicles and then through our bloodstream so this is actually the delivery pathways in the body. So it's actually the inhalation goes from our nose to the brain and then hormonal and neurochemicals release and then to the bloodstream and to the body organs or 
through external dermal application through the skin to the muscles and so on and so forth. The third one, which is internal, and this is not a preferable way. Uh, we are not actually recommending any ingestion of essential oils because it's very dangerous. Uh, this can happen in very, very limited conditions and, and, um, and under supervision of a clinical certified practitioner with the uh, medical doctor and preferable it be it's going to be like uh, the nurse practitioners or the clinical the advanced clinical aroma uh, therapist so this is how essential oils works actually in our body uh, the controversy is big because there is a lot of internet medicine a lot of internet doctors and a lot of people who are out there that is promoting people to use essential oils in every single way. FDA has many red flags to a lot of companies, especially the MLMs uh, that are encouraging people to use essential oils without being educated or certified or even without knowing the contraindications that essential oils can actually have with the medication they use. So that's why it's very important when we uh, use essential oils is to follow up with a practitioner who studied chemistry, botany, taxonomy, body systems, and know exactly what they are doing. So um, the chemistry of, of essential oil is very important because this is how we know how to administer the essential oils, the different essential oils into um into the applications so every um essential oil comes from a, a, a chemical family and um these chemical families are uh, every one of them have a different therapeutic action and that's the chemistry behind the essential oil so it's not the lavender that makes us uh sleep it's the chemical components in the lavender that makes us actually uh, relax. Um, so I picked today um, different um, products, uh, different essential oils. We're going to talk uh, about them and see how they are used in, in the clinical aromatherapy and what are their core uh, aromatic application and also the therapeutic actions and the uh, contraindications. So clary stage salvia claria is one of them. In the herbal traditional use, the seeds were used as a compress and to reduce swelling. Flowers and leaves were used as antiseptic and to treat catara and the herbs used for stomach disorders. Um, the pharmacology for clary seeds, they are antidepressant, they have antifungal activities and antimicrobial and they are sedative. When it comes to clinical aromatherapy, the family that falls, the clary stage falls under is the esters and it's relaxing to the nervous system, balancing, antispasmodic and are very soothing. So the core applications that we can actually use clary stage in is in the uh, muscular system for aches, pains, for cramps, spas, sciatica, for carpal tunnels, in the nervous system where people have insomnia and anxiety, headaches, migraines. Um, in the endocrine system, actually, for the uh, menopausal period and also for hormonal uh, imbalances. Uh, for skin, it's used a lot for eczema and inflamed skin for, for wrinkles and excessive sebum. And also in the, uh, in the circulatory system for broken capillaries. And the very important thing is that when we use essential oils, we don't use them directly on our skin. It has to be diluted in another carrier oil, which is a vegetable oil or a nut and seed oil in order to prevent sensitization. The second uh, oil we're going to talk about is uh, eucalyptus globulus. And um, the traditional use is that the aboriginals in Australia using the leaves for steam and baths. And it's why it was the, the king of, of uh, essential oils this year because of COVID and how many um, 
people are were using uh, the the leaves or the essential oils. Um, it helps reduce the mucous membrane. It also uh, helps in um, the uh, swelling, and it's there in the popular uh, cough medicines. Uh, the pharmacology it is analgesic. It is anti-fungal, anti-inflammatory, and antiviral and decon decongestant. It falls under the chemical family oxides, which they are um, antiviral, expectorant, and respiratory stimulant. Uh, the core aromatic application for eucalyptus oils, uh, the clinical uh, aromatherapy application, is for digestive system for um, um, any viral infection. Uh, for muscles, for aches and pains and rheumatoid arthritis and sprains, for the respiratory system, for chronic bronchitis, for asthma, for um, flu, cold coughs, nasal congestion. But one of the contraindications is that it is not to be used with young children under five years old. It has no other contraindications, one of, of the safest. And a case study done uh, on um, a 42 years old female, and this was from the uh, um, book of clinical aromatherapy by the great Jane Buckle. And she has a herbetic liaison on her nasal septum, and they used 25% solution of eucalyptus oil in aloe vera gel. This was applied twice daily every two hours, and the lesion decreased in size, the pain was reduced, and the usual healing time with medicine was 10 days versus the two to three days. And there was no reoccurrence. Uh, and this is uh, a real case study done in um, an American hospital. Then we have frankincense and the essential oil coming is actually coming from the resins. Uh, there is multiple speeches of frankincense. There is serrata, sacra, friana, all of them are great. It's one of my favorite essential oils. The uh, herbal use, it was used uh, for ulcers, tumors, for arthritis, mouth sores, analgesic, and also for, uh, um, of course, incenses. Uh, pharmacology, great and anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and anti-tumor. Um, it is falling under the chemical family monotherpenes, where are they are antiseptic, antiviral, stimulant, energizing, and mild expectorant. Um, so uh, frankincense is great for uh, immune support. Uh, it is great for any swelling in joints and, and, and uh, uh, muscles, um, for sinus congestion, bronchitis, and for skin, for eczema, and for um, scar tissues, for skin, for hives as well. Um, there is no contraindication in the serrata. Uh, there is other speeches that has uh, contraindication with blood thinners, if you are on blood thinners. Uh, another case study uh, with a lady who was 85 years old, a female with depression, insomnia, and hyperventilation. They used the two drops of frankincense oil inhaled from a cotton ball and the two drops under her pillow twice daily. And in seven days, she was smiling, no hyperventilation, and better sleeping. Again, this is from the clinical aromatherapy, Jane Buckle. And who were in the two key studies, that was the clinical nurses who are aromatherapists as well uh, that are using the essential oils. And in the United States, there is a lot of hospitals that are actually allowing clinical aromatherapists or nurses to use essential oils under um, uh, clinical supervision and, of course, after the consent from the patients. Then Marjoram which is another amazing oil, the oregano majorana, and that's one of the Egyptian uh, oils that I am uh, proud of. And it's the, for traditional use, it's used for chest, liver, and spleen, stomach issues, uh, for bronchitis, uh, promoting digestion, pharmacology, antimicrobial, antispasmodic, and anti-inflammatory. 
for the clinical aromatherapy, it falls under the alcohol monotherpenols family, strong antimicrobial, it is antiviral and immune support system. Um, we use it in um, spasmodic coughs and bronchitis, in any digestive upsets, in any muscular pains, um, carpal tunnels, uh, joint pains, osteoarthritis as well. And valerian, valeriana officinalis, which is another amazing oil. And that, this oil is actually more uh, into use in the nervous system, the, the, the uh, central nervous system. And uh, it's also for the, the herb, like the tea and the traditional use of it. It is great for dry coughs and asthma, uh, improved sleeps. And uh, pharmacology, it's sedative, it's anti-inflammatory, and it's used for the nervous system. Uh, it falls under the FESP313 family, powerful anti-inflammatory and soothing to the nervous system. So mostly valerian is used into a lot of nervous of um, blends for the nervous system to calm it down. Because we believe in aromatherapy that um, you have to address the mind, body, and soul to have this healing, complete healing. If you can treat the body without treating the mind or the soul, and stress is 90%, 90, let's say 90% of the um, cases that we see and the, the um, uh, customers that comes or, the, or when we work in hospitals, it is because of stress that triggers our uh, immunity system and then uh, we have all of this uh, modern epidemics let's say um, before um, finishing my um, presentation today NAHA is a national association for holistic aromatherapy and we are a nonprofit organization uh, our aim and mission in life is to educate people about the safety of aromatherapy of the um uh to create awareness about sustainability about how to use essential oils for for holistic and clinical uh uh therapeutic uh benefits and uh, it is we have international presence every almost in every continent and um a lot of um, doctors nurses chemists um, and uh, a lot of other practitioners are within the organization, great community, and uh, it was a great learning path for me as well. So um, thank you so much uh, for your attendance and for the opportunity to talk about um, aromatherapy. I know it's a very small part of the plant medicine and of